Now, is it possible to clone from this kind of tissue? Are we looking at, I mean, we're, Ron and I were sort of making fun here of a real life Jurassic Park, but is that possible? What's going on guys? Hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about T-Rex again. Specifically about one of the most insane discoveries the scientific community ever came across for the animal. So we all know that the plot of Jurassic Park is that prehistoric mosquitoes that were trapped in amber paved way for John Hammond scientists to mine dino DNA from the fossilized tree sap. Well, this idea from Michael Crichton was believed by many to not be viable for the real world due to DNA having a shelf life that would have expired far before modern man would have the technology to mine it from amber. But an interesting study from 2005 started to call some of that thought into question in a fun way. Today, I wanted to go over something that isn't really talked about anymore, but it was a pretty big deal to not only Jurassic Park fans when it first came out, but also paleontology and dinosaurs in general. This is the controversial study of, no joke, dinosaur proteins being discovered from the remains of a Tyrannosaurus rex. So back in 2005, research led by Mary Schweitzer, who happened to be a molecular paleontologist from NC State, reported on something they thought to be impossible. And that was that real life soft tissue perfectly preserved inside of a leg from a young T-Rex happened to be found in Montana. Chemical analysis had revealed something that looked like proteins from animals inside of the dinosaur's leg bone, which was a pretty shocking discovery. Now back when this news broke out, we were all kind of already expecting Jurassic Park 4 to be right around the corner. It was 2005 after all, and there's like a four year gap for every movie. Little did we know we'd have to wait an additional 10 years for Jurassic World. But this discovery happened to be extremely interesting for fans back in the day. Now, many people such as myself were still interested in what kind of new stuff would be in the movie or dinosaurs in general as far as science goes. So this was a massive find. To quote the Smithsonian Magazine's website, it was big news indeed. Last year, this is a long time ago, when Schweitzer announced she had discovered blood vessels and structures that looked like whole cells inside that T-Rex bone, the first observation of its kind. The finding amazed colleagues who had never imagined that even a trace of still soft dinosaur tissue could survive. After all, as any textbook will tell you, when an animal dies, soft tissue such as blood vessels, muscle, and skin decay and disappear over time, while hard tissues like bone may gradually acquire minerals from the environment and become fossils. Now, there were some people that actually tried to take Mary Schweitzer's research and kind of put it in the direction of a young earth creationist sort of theory, and she didn't find this very flattering because she herself is a Christian, and when they were taking her scientific research and kind of trying to attribute it to a different theory apart from her work, it, it was not very cool. She even has an Old Testament verse on a plaque in her office that says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and future. She was not very happy that they were taking her faith and kind of running with it as far as a, a different dinosaur theory goes or whatever. But this was an extremely controversial find, to say the least, due to the fact that something like soft tissue was just like the Smithsonian Magazine website says, this was believed to be unrealistic of a find because the popular scientific belief was that the proteins would break apart and degrade in less than 1 million years. And we all know that Tyrannosaurus Rex died out 65 million years ago. So yeah, needless to say, it stirred up a pretty big controversy. Mary, Jack, and their team published their B-Rex findings in a series of papers in the journal Science and were promptly attacked. Critics said their samples might have been contaminated or that the supposed blood vessels were actually something called biofilm. Again, going back to the Smithsonian Magazine's website, of course, what everyone wants to know is whether DNA might be lurking in that tissue. Whitmire, from much experience with the press since the discovery, calls this the awful question, whether Schweitzer's work is paving the road to a real-life version of science fiction's Jurassic Park, where dinosaurs were regenerated from DNA preserved in amber. But DNA, which carries the genetic script for an animal, is a very fragile molecule. It's also ridiculously hard to study because it's so easily contaminated with modern biological material, such as microbes or skin cells while buried or after being dug up. Instead, Schweitzer has been testing her dinosaur tissue samples for proteins, which are a bit hardier and more readily distinguished from contaminants. Schweitzer would go on to show a slide to Dr. Horner about this whole finding, and Dr. Jack Horner actually said, when she first found the red blood cell looking structures, I said, yep, that's what they look like, and he thought it was possible they were red blood 
nut cells, but he gave her some advice. Now, see if you can find some evidence to show that that's not what they are. She said she dissolved the bone away and there were blood vessels. And, you know, I was like, shocked. I mean, how could that be? How could that be? That's right. This carried into a lot of extensive research that went a long way, which led to criticism about Mary Schweitzer's findings because people thought that the material she'd found from the Tyrannosaur couldn't possibly be dinosaur proteins, but actually just biofilm instead. And that was kind of the leading counter theory to her discovery. But just a little bit of research time later, Schweitzer checked out the T-Rex proteins and found out that, yeah, they really did come from the dinosaur. And this discovery would eventually lead to even more research being done on possible soft tissue being found in other fossilized dinosaur specimens over the years. This preservation of soft tissue, by the way, it needed some scientific explanation to help tell us what exactly was going on here, and the understanding that everyone settled on was something to do with iron, believe it or not. Everyone now thinks today that when the T-Rex died, the dinosaur's blood started to decompose, but thanks to the iron from its blood, this helped preserve the tissue trapped inside of the dinosaur's leg for millions of years. They even tested this theory on an ostrich femur apparently helping solidify the idea that this is how the soft tissue was able to stay preserved for such a long period of time which is something that I'm sure got Jurassic Park fans pretty interested in, like, immediately. But the idea of actual geneticists being able to extract any DNA from the dinosaur boning recreating a T-Rex is kind of unlikely to say the least. However, there has always been the cloning of a mammoth that's been reported to be right around the corner for several years now. And you guys might remember a couple of years back when I talked about Elon Musk creating dinosaurs via Dr. Jack Horner's chicken source proposal that's been floated around for a while. So this kind of thinking will probably probably persist forever, but the actual finding of soft tissue collagen trapped inside of a tyrannosaur's leg bone is something gigantic, even if we won't make a Jurassic Park out of it. And it really did shake the paleontology world greatly, and it just goes to show how much Michael Crichton's book and the idea of mining dinosaur DNA and, you know, dinosaurs in general in relation to paleontology and science are very important for not only our science fiction franchise world, but everything else in general. All of the obstacles that stand in the way between us and cloning a dinosaur, getting the, getting the DNA from the dinosaur is actually probably going to be the easiest, and that's not something we're anywhere close to doing. So... Again, in regards to this whole controversy, it was fascinating at the time because Tyrannosaurus rex and dinosaurs in general, we not only believed by that point that Jurassic Park probably couldn't happen, but, you know, the idea that they'd been solidified as being millions and millions of years old was, you know, that had been a thing for a long time. And like I said, Mary Schweitzer is a, you know, Christian. She says it herself very seriously, which is why she didn't like when they took some of her words out of context. And I can totally understand why. I don't think a lot of people understand how often Christianity actually does overlap with paleontology. Dr. Robert Backer, who I've actually talked about on this channel before in the past, is even an ordained Pentecostal minister. Remember, this is one of the guys that actually was right there with John Ostrom as far as like revolutionizing the way we think about dinosaurs. And to quote actually another website, Prehistoric Planet, Backer sees little conflict between religion and science, a Pentecostal preacher. He says scientists and creationists alike would do well to read St. Augustine's work, the 5th century scholar and source of much of the Christian tradition and belief. I mean, if you're doing anything archaeological and digging in the ground for some sort of relic, whether it be human or animal remains, you're going to have to research a lot of this stuff. And with a famous paleontologist that literally broke ground, just like John Ostrom at the time, for doing a lot of cool stuff and revolutionizing dinosaurs, I mean, for God's sake, he is in the Lost World Jurassic Park, like he had a character completely designed as him as a person. I mean, this is just fascinating actual stuff, man. And look, I myself being a Christian have always found the animosity within the discussion of paleontology and religion to be really goofy, to put it mildly. And with the amount of archaeological research that's been done over the years on both, I think it's kind of ignorant. Right now, I'm learning a lot about ancient Rome during the time of Paul's death, by the way, and there's a lot of cool stuff there. With that being said, the soft tissue discovery of Tyrannosaurus rex and how it was actually able to pave the way for further discoveries on some sort of newfound understanding of dinosaurs 
tours in general, especially as far as the preservation process comes with, uh, you know, iron being a factor into blood, I think all this stuff was really fascinating. And I've always wondered why Jurassic Park movies didn't want to go in some kind of different direction when it came to extracting DNA in different ways. This would be a really cool one, and although it wouldn't be scientifically accurate, let's, you know, be real about everything, there's not much that you can really do to be 100% scientifically accurate in movies. I'm not saying I want something off the wall and crazy, I criticize Dominion for a lot of that stuff, but just think about what you could do with different ideas on how to extract dinosaur DNA in future Jurassic Park sequels. Anyways guys, in regards to Tyrannosaurus Rex and the research done on it, this is all really cool stuff. It shook the world at the time of its release, and it's still something that I find to be really interesting today. It was almost as controversial as Dr. Jack Horner's scavenger theory, but because so much information was coming out at the time about it, and because Dr. Mary Schweitzer did wind up getting proven right with the preservation of these cells, whereas now today we think Tyrannosaur is more of an opportunist than a strict scavenger, uh, you can't be as controversial, I guess. But anyways, those are all just my own thoughts and opinions on this old research, its relation to Jurassic Park, and how this insane Tyrannosaur discovery really shook the world back in the day. What do all of you guys think about about it and what's your favorite tyrannosaur discovery that's come out recently i know a lot of people are talking about lips but this in my opinion was way more cool so whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be i'd love to hear them in the comments down below now before i go i'd like to thank all of my game wardens and engine executives as well as all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. You've all helped my channel immensely, and I'm incredibly grateful for all of that support. Now I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video and hope that you enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you all consider subscribing. I'll see you all in the next video, guys, and as always, take it easy.